are tumbling down the rabbit hole. This is the movie podcast for WeTumbleDown.com. Each week we dissect a movie and tell you who, if anyone, should watch it. I'm your host, Rob Yates. Still getting used to having a camera there. And if you <laughs> touch that mic stand again... Ed's going to kill me. I'm telling you, if you can't handle that mic stand, you give it to me next time. <laughs> Our tech wizard and trumpet player extraordinaire, Ed Lind. How you doing, Ed? I'm good, Rob. How are you? I'm doing good. Getting good. used to the microphone. Yes, clearly. Uh, clearly, yes. And uh, rounding out our trio, the bearded wonder himself, our everyman, Connor Yates. Hey, guys. <laughs> you, don't touch you the microphone. <laughs> you went for oh, it. I had to. You also, we don't all have to be so close. Maybe I want to be close. Yeah, but you're, you're overloading, so stop. Maybe I want to overload. We can't edit this out. We can't edit this out. This no. is live. Well, it's not live. It's recording. What do you call that when it's like live but not live? It's we're too lazy to edit video. Well, it's not we're too lazy. We're well, just not you, good. Then why don't you do it? Well, because it's going to look weird. We're gonna be, uh, mm. you, so you don't know how to do like, so borrow from Star Wars, just do a wipe. Ed, everything can't be solved with a wipe. <laughs> everything Trust can me, be most of my problems wipe. can be solved with a wipe. <laughs> I'm doing something wrong then. Baby wipes. Connor, are you doing well today? Uh, I had a phenomenal day. I yeah? killed it at the center. Today. I thought you were going to say you had a phenomenal poop. No, no. No. No, we're past that. Okay. You had a phenomenal day. Oh, it was great. It was great? It was great. Good. I had like, normally in a given day, you'll have like two to three memberships sold. Today I had 10. Oh, wow. Nice. And 28 people total. Do you so, have a quota for the month or anything? How many? Or so how far I'm, are you? So, so it's based on the amount of members that we get in the center, and our quota is 158 for the month of January. So members. that's not your quota. That's the for the entire building. That's between me and the other girl, as well as front desk. Okay. So right now we are at 86 after today because I signed up 10 memberships that had a total of 28 people on it. That's great. So, that's fantastic. Good job. Yeah. Welcome to New Year's resolutions. Yeah, exactly. I see everybody, they're like, I'm ready for membership. I'm like, just sign here. Give me your money. Thanks. That's not, it's very now easy. also give him your money because what you gave me is just because I'm poor. So go ahead over there and pay them. <laughs> if you, you want to make some money, you might be out of a job soon, but set up a little racket there. Not going to do it. No? All right, man. We so don't condone that. You're losing out. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it works. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. That's good. Nice. Have we been watching anything interesting lately? I feel like I did, but I can't remember what it was. Must not have been that interesting. Just no, so, I'm sure it was. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I've seen more movies. I just don't remember which ones. <laughs> I actually, because I didn't realize there was an animated Troll Hunters, I actually decided to try and watch like the first couple episodes of the animated Troll Hunters, and it wasn't that good. But Really? I tried. Was it for children? I mean, it was just below... Like my level, so maybe like till like the age of twenty two, but no higher. So for like zero to three year olds. No, but about about like hey, four about to six. <sighs> no, that's his level. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. Sorry. Yeah, but yeah, I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. I watched a documentary called "The Fear of Thirteen. Uh, it's really you mean weird like today. Title. No, I didn't watch it today. No, I'm saying because today's oh. Friday the thirteenth. No, it actually has almost nothing to do oh. with that quote it's about a guy who uh gets thrown in prison for murder and he's not guilty and it's cool because it's him actually recounting his entire time while he was in jail um it, it's very interesting it's like he's narrating it and talking to the camera okay. and answering questions. it was interesting yeah yeah you guys want to move on to our feature presentation no I do. not apparently <laughs> Fine. What, what would we like to talk about? Star Wars. Star- Ed. Okay. So I just learned what, a, with what wipes. is it, a BB-8? Yes, you don't know who BB-8 is. bb eight's the soccer ball. <laughs> it is the soccer and, ball. And everyone at home is going to hate you because he's not a soccer ball. A-C-O-2. Okay. What's his name? K-2-S-O. He looks yeah. smaller in the movie than the actual prop in real life. Yeah, your wife says that too. It's crazy though. <laughs> Look, re- <laughs> life is tough, but I've accepted myself. You're forcing me to actually do some editing. Force. No, but have you seen, like, have you seen behind the scenes? <laughs> you can't go with that. Have you seen after that comment? <laughs> I can, and I did. Uh, Look, come on, Rob. Yes, I realize there is a disparity between what you perceive on screen and what they show you in real but life. it's so different. Well, it's camera angles. You should know that. Nice. Why should I know that? 
because you you went to school for film and theater. Did I? I went to school for theater. I did most of my time in theater. Let's put it that way. And you really love film. Do you know how many camera angles there are for this podcast right now, or this this show? Excuse me, <laughs> show. Yeah, That's a podcast. What's a podcast Pod- you show? Can, you can do video podcast. Neil deGrasse Tyson does. If it's good enough for him, it's good enough for us. Yeah, but he knows like science and stuff. I know science and stuff, not yeah. as much as him. Yeah, I was gonna say you're not. I could. I would challenge him on his Star Wars trivia. I bet you I could beat him there. Well, trivia is one thing. Trivia is one thing. I'm just saying. Like, have you noticed how many camera angles this show has? Neil deGrasse Tyson, much respect, but Gauntlet Throne. One. Yeah. One. It's as high as most of us can count. So our feature pre- our presentation. Our feature presentation, Hannibal, picked out by Ed Lind. Oh. Summary. Living in exile, Hannibal Lecter tries to reconnect with now di- disgraced FBI agent Clarice Starling and finds herself, finds himself, excuse me, a target for revenge from a powerful victim. Ed, you picked the movie. Why'd you pick it? And what did you think? Because of the face he's making. That was it? Yeah. He goes, him. I, I picked the movie because we haven't done a lot of horror. Uh, and it doesn't, this isn't really like a we horror movie. No, but it's, um, you know, it's it's intense in moments. Yeah. I mean. Um, it's a little creepy. Uh, spoiler alert, guy eats his own brain. No big deal. It's all good, right? You enjoyed that part. That was my favorite. Peeling the skull cap back is. It does what, watching this with Rachel was fabulous i'm sure she was just all cringes um see as you know uh and as as everybody's about to learn i've read the books for all of these that the movies are based on and the books are infinitely better agreed like the detail and the information and the the detail we'll get into that so good um but i picked it because anthony hopkins is one of my favorite actors and i honestly think he's one of the most underappreciated actors alive today I can get on so, board with that. Yeah. Um, I did not pick it for Julianne Moore. No. No offense. But no. Uh, I did not pick it for the intense 90s nostalgia of the movie. No. No. I mostly picked it for Anthony Hopkins and to freak Connor out. Because I like this movie. I, I actually really do enjoy it, but mostly to freak him out. That's a noble cause. Connor, your thoughts? <laughs> so I decided to like go... All the way into this. You watched at night in the dark? I watched it at night in the dark. Excellent. And I took all the covers off my bed, no pillows, and I just laid in bed with a t-shirt and shorts and nothing else around me. And That's probably good. And I just immersed myself as much as I could. Okay. Yeah. I didn't sleep for a while afterwards. Really? Yeah. It bothered you that much? I... Was it the bowels spilling out after the guy spills over the balcony? My mind, I had like a very <laughs> vivid imagination. So it's like I took Hannibal Lecter and then I was like, oh, what would happen to me if I met him? And then I'm just sitting there and just kept going. You'd be I fine. Kept going. You'd be fine because you're nice. He only eats the root. I'm, I'm kind of a, a smart ass. Yeah, that's not a problem. As long as you're, as long, he doesn't care whether or not you're mean. He cares whether or not you're useful. I know, but like for me, it was just kind of like, oh, wow, he did a lot of really gross stuff. Um, He wouldn't eat you. It's okay. He would eat you. I mean, oh, he would absolutely eat (laughs) you. Oh, yeah, you're dead. (laughs) Yes. Well, first, we would have an awesome conversation. There would be some good talking going on. There would, and he'd seduce you. Then he would eat me. Yes. Absolutely. You'd want him to eat you at the end. I think there'd be a little bit of a, a battle. You know, I'd like to think I'd I'd fight back a little bit and try to eat him first. I think you'd you'd realize it, but uh, too late. Nice. Like, like, nope. It's like, oh yes, this is right. Wait, what? Oh and no, my face. No, I'm I'm not going to end up like Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Oldman took it took Rachel a while to realize that was him. I kept hearing the voice, and I didn't figure it out till this time that that was Gary Oldman. I yeah. had to look it up, and I'm like, that voice. I've always said I know that voice. I don't know that. I gotta know who. Gary Oldman, I'm like, oh, it's Commissioner Gordon. You, you knew that, right? From, or no? From from Batman. Yeah. Very good. Not from the local police station. Excellent. <laughs> if Commissioner Gordon worked for good the local police station, <laughs> Tabernacle would be a much better place. Probably. Rob would actually like. I'd be Batman. I'd try to be Batman. Because <laughs> you know, Tabernacle would be my Gotham City. I just. Hang out in the trees. Um, <laughs> Rob's like in a in a hunting bluff up in the trees, just like <laughs> making sure the kids don't steal each other's lunch money and stuff like that. That doesn't belong to you. Anyway, um, Batman. I I liked the movie. Um, 
Meh. I've seen it. <laughs> I've only actually seen it once before this. The movie. Yeah, I've seen it like ten times. Before um. This. So and it's been <laughs> so many, times. many years. It. It doesn't hold up terribly well. No. Um. Very nineties. But I really like the acting. And I like a lot of the concepts. I agree with you, though. Um, having read the book, I think the book oh. is oh. its a fabulous book. Like, it's extremely well-written, and the, like you said, the detail. And I feel like there's more of a story in the book, and the movie yeah. kind of loses some of that well, essence. You can't see inside the heads as well. Yeah. Like, you can kind of see Clarice processing a lot of things in the movie, but you can't see Hannibal's internal struggle, mm-hmm. struggle as well. Yeah. Um, which is well depicted in the book. They don't even really give him an internal struggle in the movie. No. He's just kind of like, oh, I have to go over here. Oh, that guy's got to die. Oh, I got to save Clarice. Oh, Clarice <laughs> has to save me. Oh, I got to cook dinner. Oh, I got to go. Oh, I got to hit. Kids got to eat this brain. Here you go. Uh, like, he's lethal on the wind in the movie, but in the book it's like, you get into the psychology of, this, of the sociopathic psychologist, and it's like, whoa, this is a fun place. I, I say fun. You would say terrifying. Well, hold on. Would I enjoy the book mo- more than the movie? Ooh. Um, I, I think... Th- I think not. I think that the... The, the book lack, would have been worse? I think the, the book would mess you up more because your imagination would be more free to run away with the images they give you because they're very, very detailed in the book. But since there's no image in front of you for you to latch onto, your brain would just... You're a creative person. Yeah. You would run away with what they're giving <laughs> you and sleep okay. even less. You would love the book, but you would I not think, sleep. I think I would enjoy going into... Uh, the psychotic or the psychology. Do you of the, want to borrow the book? I mean, I I read, would actually suggest Science reading of the Lambs first. all three of the book. I would I would read yeah. Red Dragon, Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal. I think the books actually. Wait, did the movie Silence of the Lamb and then this one are connected? Yeah, this is the this is the sequel. Oh, okay. Yes, Silence of the Lambs is the Never original seen film. Silence of the Lambs, but Red Dragon's the first book. Oh, huh. okay. You yeah. should probably see since uh, Silence of the Lambs since that induced your birth. I could not. Fun Honestly, story. I think that that movie is is less intense than this one. I think it's more psychological and less um, graphic and terrifying. Then I wouldn't enjoy I, it. If it's more so psychological, I actually have a, that would be worse. I have a question okay. later, but we can jump to it now. I felt like Silence of the Lambs was much more suspenseful. It was a more of a thriller. Yeah. This, I didn't find suspenseful, but it's definitely more like gross, gross and disgusting and yeah. disturbing. Um. See, when, but but it's like, it's psychological in that like, Hannibal Lecter is really creepy in that movie, and you just can't get a bead on him. Are like, you talking about Silence of the Lambs? Silence of the Lambs, yeah, like you, you really just, you cannot figure this guy out, and you want to, and you can't, you just can't. Um, so it's not like what happens in the movie is scary, it's just, it's so in the head that you're going, you can't get your mind around what's happening until it finalizes, and you go... Oh my God! That's the game you're playing. Oh my God! So it's not scary in your mind. It's just it's more of a thriller. Well, yeah. I should it's probably more just try to because well, if you go only, through this, I honestly think the, you'd be fine. The, with the only way that I'm gonna ever Silence be okay scary. with horror or anything like that is to slowly immerse myself. So, and if we're doing a movie centric podcast, you got idea that I gotta at least you gotta try. get that third R out in horror. That that horror movie, <sighs> horror. Try saying it like with an A instead of an O at the beginning. Horror. 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 I'm going to be I watching the Hobart horror, movie. Horror. My name is Robert. The horror um, movie. Sorry, it's just my Jersey accent. So, noisiness. I assume we all think Anthony Hopkins is great in this That's movie. That's his name. Thank you. I kept forgetting. I said it like... I mm-hmm. know I know. you just said it, and I just couldn't remember. Okay, but we're um, good. Yes, I loved he him. is amazing. Phenomenal. One of the le- most underappreciated actors of his time by far. Instinct. Instinct, 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 instinct. He's fabulous in instinct. Do you instinct. Th- go see it. Do you think he's fabulous in this? Yes. Yeah? I think he's more fabulous in Silence of the Lambs. Which is funny because he has more screen time in this one. Yeah, but I think it's a lack of screen time that allows him to really freak people out. I don't think... um, And the writing's better for that. Writing's much better. Yeah. Okay. What? I just think that's the writing that makes it better, not necessarily the amount of screen time. Well... You need to see the movie. You need to see the movie. One of the things that a lot of people don't realize about Silence of the Lambs, and it's one of my favorite facts about movies, is that he's only in 16 minutes of the movie, and it's a two-hour movie. But he's The movie's one of about the, him. 
what he's one of the major things that people talk about in the movie. It's not about him, but when you watch the movie, you walk away talking about Anthony Hopkins' version of Hannibal Lecter, and he's got 16 minutes of screen time out of 120. So in the in the in those 16 minutes, he portrayed he's a so character impactful. in such a way. He, yeah, he's so impactful wow. in 16 minutes out of 120. Wow. He's in just over 10 percent of the movie, and he's the only thing you want to talk about. He's he's fabulous. Um, okay. Let's let's move on to Julianne Moore. Um, she gets. She's replacing Jodie Foster, which is unfortunate because I think Jodie Foster made the character. Jodie Foster is Clarice Starling. Wow, I really should slow down when I talk. Um, yeah, Jodie Foster is Clarice Starling. I agree. Um, I don't think anything Julianne Moore could have done would have saved those comparisons just because of Jodie Foster's original performance. That being said, do you think she does all right or is she just She's passable? When was Jodie Foster... Science of the Lambs. So uh, the first. So so I it's didn't 80s. have a chance, so I can't really compare the two, but just um, with, I'm sorry. Clarice Starling. Thank you. Clarice Starling, I think she did a, a, a fine job. I think she did a good job supporting, and her character was believable. I think her facial expressions were pretty darn good, and I wasn't too upset with her. Ed? Jodie Foster. Julianne Moore does fine. But I think some of her facial expressions actually are a little too much. Um, really? Yeah, you got to see Jodie Foster. Um, yes, see, I mean, just for me, just yeah, watching yeah. this without that context. I don't have. I can't do that though, because I've seen Sounds because of the Lambs like twenty or thirty times, and I've seen this ten or such fifteen. Such an attachment to it, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 you, I can't watch one and not compare it to the others. I, I don't. She does even okay. If I try to think about it. Her it's it's her facial expressions are just too much sometimes. Just, uh, every once in a while, there might be three points in the movie where it's just a little too much for me. But it's it's really it's really just a little bit, and I'm being picky. besides that. Besides that, I think she's serviceable. The way she delivers her lines is good. She's very convincingly drugged at the end. Yes, because um, that's a that's a hard line to toe for me. If you said we need you to act like you're on morphine, I'd probably act like I was drunk. But that's not and right. it's not the same thing. And she really does a good job of seeming like she's. She's been drugged, not that she's inebriated, but that there's like she's fully functional, but she's not in full command of her faculties. Mm -hmm. It's it's a weird line that she does a very yep. good job with. Okay, yeah, I agree with all, all the things that have been said. I think she's passable. I think she's she's even good. I'd say um, it's just that Jodie Foster had such a command of that character. Well, what's strange about it is it's a subtlety to the character though. It's not like this overpowering performance that Jodie Foster gives. It's a very subtle thing. She's reserved. She's a reserved character because it's a southern character. So there's this politeness and this reservation to her interactions with other people that the writing is to blame there too. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Because in the opening sequence with the um, with the drug dealer Evelda um, Drumgo, when they go to arrest her before that, the police officer is like getting kind of getting up in her face and she gets up in his face in response. Jodie Foster's Clarice wouldn't have done that. And that's that's writing. That part is definitely writing. So there's there's a little bit of both going on. That's not to blame. That's just different approaches to a movie. Mm -hmm. um, going along the lines of writing. I, I feel like this story is kind of disconnected. It feels very disjointed in parts um having read the book i feel like the book actually does a better job connecting all those things but we watched the movie so does this story or the way the story is portrayed work for you guys um are there things you liked or disliked uh <laughs> i don't know the I don't think it really has to do anything with the past movies and then this movie, the reason why it would feel disjointed. Um, but for me, anything that may have seemed off to me, I, I just I didn't really notice it too much. There wasn't anything that really stood out to me. Um, the story was just weird and I was trying to accept it from the beginning for myself because this isn't my genre. This isn't something that I normally would ever like be like, yeah, let's just watch this on a whim type of thing. So I was trying to just accept everything that was coming towards me. So maybe that changed my point of view. But all in all, it didn't seem that disconnected or, you know, jumbled around. Um, so for me, it was fine. It was fine. Ed? It's very 90s in some of the shots. There's oh, some totally. There's some long, drawn-out, like, scenic passages that don't 
have anything to do with the story other than trying to show like we're in a different place now someone's traveling and like (laughs) it's just a very 90s style of film it also did that um that slow-mo gladiator thing oh god i know a couple times same a couple times very like i like that chunky slow-mo weirdness I, I, I no. really do like that, actually. I think it was less bad in this movie compared to Gladiator. I it was loved less it in used, Gladiator. But it was why, also less why do you used. like it, though? Why do you like that effect? It just, I don't know. It, it seemed like they were trying to highlight something, and it slowed it down for me to enjoy the action more. But my problem with it is it slows it down to draw attention to it, but it's also, like, muddy because they're pulling frames out of it, and it's jumpy. So whatever they're trying to highlight for me, doesn't get highlighted. Did you feel that way? I did. There's one time when it's not slow motion, but when she's going to get the baby from Avelda's body, they do snapshots and actually use a camera sound, and Mm -hmm. later on they say there are pictures. That one I like. I like when it's snapshot, frame by frame. She's going to get the kid. She's got the kid. She's walking away. That one I like, but when it's actually like the real slow-mo where it's... That's... No, not so much. Um... The the problem I have with the writing in this movie is that if you if you think back on it, and the movie does a good job of trying to connect them or, or tries to do a good job, um, and it kind of tricks a lot of audience members. It wasn't until I talked to Rachel afterwards that she was like, oh, that is kind of weird. You start off with Clarice Starling for a good 20 minutes, and then it jumps to, what is that, Florence? For like 30 minutes, and we completely, almost entirely forget forget her. And then at the end of that, or towards the end of that, we jump back to her for a second, go over to like Mason Verger for a while, go back to Florence, Hannibal escapes, and like it, it starts to just meander its way around, and it doesn't feel purposeful, if that makes sense. Like there's, It's not to the second half of the movie that things actually start to get rolling. So you kind of just felt like, hey, we have a whole bunch of different points, and instead of trying to make it cohesive, it's just like, here's a point, here's a point, here's a point, and then, yeah. Yeah, well, that's how I felt, and I have the, uh, I guess, the disadvantage of having read the book, and what the book does, and this pertains to the ending, so I want to jump there um, and give a hard spoiler warning. We're going to jump into some major spoilers if we haven't already. <laughs> wow, I pretty much... Yeah, that's fine. Well... Sorry. Um, you have alluded to, you haven't... You're, you're walking the line. Um, I think the problem with this movie has to do with the end of the movie, for me, and why there's not a through line. Why? Um... Explain Do you that. remember how the book ends? No, because I read it like 10 years ago. Uh, Clarice and Hannibal actually run away together. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Very different. And so... Okay. <laughs> in the movie, they portray it kind of, where there's this uh, this fascination with one another, but I don't think it ever goes at least for Clarice, past a fascination with him. I would have never thought, just watching this myself, that they would have ended up running yeah. away together. Um, in book the takes a different route. In the book, it, it, it that fascination turns it kind of romantic in a really weird way. And like the end of the book is, if I recall correctly, um, Thomas Harris, the author, writes something like, they were spotted at an opera once and nobody's seen them since. And that's that's it. And so... That fascination turned romantic interest, I think, drives a lot of the book and also makes Clarice's long stretches of like fascination with him actually make more sense by the time we get to the end of the movie. Here it just feels like she's fascinated with him and she's still fascinated. Like, it doesn't go anywhere for me. It um, doesn't develop. It's stagnant. So I'll ask Connor, since this is your first time with the material and that you just found out about how the book ends... Um, do you find that more interesting or how this movie ended with the whole handcuff, cutting off the hand, that kind of thing? No, definitely the book. Definitely the book, them running away together and then actually being able to see that. And then I think with that, having that ending, that definitely, you know, going off of your point would have forced them to have more of that romantic, you know, interest. Well, and kind it's, of in, it's in a very disturbing, I know, I know it's in a disturbed way, but I think way. I would have liked that spin on it and, like to see how that would have changed or impacted the different choices that they decided to do with either the writing or even, you know, shooting the film itself. How about you, Ed? I don't know. I kind of want to... I want to go with the movie because that's the one that I experienced most recently and the idea of them getting together is like... It's really alien to the depiction of Clarice in the movie. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember having that feeling reading the book. 
I remember reading the book and thinking, this is this is okay. Like it makes sense that the book takes it in that direction and tells that story. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had to pick which one I like better, I like them not being together better because I can imagine scenarios where they still kind of play at each other. Yeah. Um, and I like that kind of, it's almost like a Batman Joker relationship. Kind of. Yeah. Um, where they need each other to kind of keep going and like, cause Clarice is just good at everything else and he's the main goal and you know, he's trying to figure out what he's doing, but she's kind of his interest and they need each other in a very strange way. Mm-hmm. Whereas them being together kind of solves that problem. And then is Clarice okay with him still eating people? Is he still eating people? Does she eat people now? Did she convert him? That feels weird. Um, but well, I think I'm, I'm. I don't know. I'm just kind of running with what you're saying that they would end up balancing each other. So why need what they had presently? You know, had that weird relationship and that interest to get to know each other in the way that they did. So I mean, yeah, you he already the, knows her. Yeah, but I mean, then you actually finalize it if you decide to get together. If you know somebody and keep them at a distance, that's one thing. But if you actually decide to choose to just be with them, I, I feel like there would be that balance. And maybe, just just maybe, that they w- wouldn't have those problems that you were necessarily well, talking Since about. I'm not a sociopath, um, <laughs> I can't be 100% sure about what I'm going to say. But um, Lecter is a sociopath. He knows her in a way that she basically can't know herself and he knows himself in a way that she can't know him. He would be in complete control of that relationship. There's no way. There's, there's no way unless he chose, unless he chose to change and he would have to make the choice. She could not manipulate him. See what, what always struck me about the ending is that I bought in the book. I don't, I wouldn't believe it if the movie had ended that way. And that's why I think that ending is kind of, makes the story less complete for me or a little more disjointed. Um, but if he wanted to to kill her or to dominate her or whatever, he could have a gazillion times already. Um, what's fascinating to me is the idea that you have Clarice Starling, who's this um, very proper, very right, follows the rules person, um, running away with someone that is totally like against everything that she would find right but at the same time you have dr lecter who is interested in this woman who in many ways is also seemingly opposite of what he would be interested in at all right and so what interests me is and what makes it creepy to me is the fact that what happens if they're both still the same exact people when they're together yeah well, there's no reason to think they would change right so that to me is the creepiest part is that there is that fascination turned attraction that is so strong between the two of them that despite the other person being so opposite of what they want or they, they think they're just so attracted that they're there, which would mean that Hannibal, maybe he's still eating people. Maybe he's still a cannibal and she's just so attracted. That to me is messed up, messed up. Um, Sounds like a my cool life. thing to think of, but. but and that's so the book does a great job with that. I think the movie's missing it. You get, I think, more of that from Hannibal. He has that line when he's, uh, I think, they're on the phone. No, it's in person when he asks her, like, "How's the job going? Like, are they appreciating you? Like, blah 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 blah." And you know, you're looking for this recognition you're never getting, and all you have to do is look in the mirror, kind of like that whole spiel. Mm-hmm. Um, we see him, but care about her that way. I think in this movie. He also kisses her at the end um, and then cuts his own hand off. So I think we get that side of it, but not the Sorry. other side. And I actually think that does, I think it does Clarice a disservice. Her character doesn't do that. And I'm okay with that, but I don't think she does go anywhere in this movie. And to me that, I don't know. Yeah, she doesn't develop at all. Yeah. Um, I mentioned it earlier. I just want to get real quick your thoughts. Silence of the Lambs is a more suspenseful thriller. I guess this is more for you since you've seen both. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of more of a gory, gross-out, disgusting, disturbing kind of movie. Yeah. Do you prefer one over the other? Do you think one is more in line with these characters than the other? I think the thriller is more in line with the Hannibal story. And I would prefer the psychological aspect to a pure gross-out. But this isn't a pure gross-out movie. There's still some psychological aspects. Sure. 
Um, but most of the tension, I think Connor would be willing to say, comes from the gross-out stuff. You know, peeling back skull caps, disembowelments, slashing yeah. throats, man-eating, man-eating boars, boars um, things of that nature are yeah. probably where most of the discomfort comes from. So let's relive all of those again for Connor. <laughs> okay, start with your favorite one, Ed. Okay. Cutting into the frontal lobe and Good. feeding it to him. Yes. That was probably the best part. And the kid eating it later. That's always nice. That was Shout it. out that to was Ray Liotta. I think his best acting in the movie is in that moment. Yes. As he's being <laughs> cut apart and eating his own brain. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great stuff. Um, I would eat his brain, for the record. I, I'm, uh, I'm curious. You don't have to do that again. <laughs> um, I'll get the bone saw. Connor I agree with you. <laughs> Next week on Tumbling Down the Rabbit Hole, we what eat does Connor's, Connor's brain, brain taste like? Is there enough okay, for both of us? Um, I think Simon's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's theirs is, is great, I promise. Um, I think Silence of the Lambs is a much better movie. It is. Um, I think there is a lot of, especially if like Hannibal Lecter and that whole thing, there's a lot here like. I just wanted to go over some interesting trivia, and there's some really interesting stuff about this movie in particular. Um, author Thomas Harris finished writing the novel and sent copies to these principal actors in Silence of the Lambs. So that's Jonathan Demme, Jodie Foster, and Anthony Hopkins for approval. The screenplay was rewritten no less than 15 times because of dissatisfaction by Demme and Foster over new character elements. In the end, neither of them ended up in the movie. Surprise. <laughs> Uh, Ridley Scott, had the director, had some uncertainty with the source material. In particular, he had difficulties with the ending of the novel, in which Lecter and Starling become lovers. I couldn't take the quant- that quantum leap emotionally on behalf of Starling, certainly on behalf of Hannibal. I'm sure that's been in the back of his mind for a number of years. But for Starling, no. I think one of the attractions about Starling to Hannibal is what a straight arrow she is. He also said uh, he also didn't buy the book from the uh, opera scene onwards which he felt became like a vampire movie. He asked Thomas Harris, the author, if he was married to his ending, and Thomas Harris said no. So Scott changed it. Um, Which is what I said. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Also, Anthony Hopkins apparently wrote a screenplay for a sequel to this film, uh, supposedly titled Hannibal Ending, which would have involved Starling killing Lecter. It was never made into anything. That would have been interesting. I would imagine that the ending to that would look a lot like the ending to Dark Knight Rises, where they kind of see each other across a cafe and give a nod and go their separate ways. Yeah, I can see that. Unless she kills him like he wanted, you know. Well, you, you no, know, you have the, you have the cafe moment, and then it just turns to um, Anthony's character or Hannibal's character as he's like walking away, he's like putting stuff into his pocket, he's about to get into his car, and then someone just comes over and just like stabs him real quick and walks away. And you I, just watch. Hannibal died. You mean like Hannibal does to that guy who tries to fake pick his pocket? Yes. And the blood squirts everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. And he thinks he's okay? Good. Good. Yep. Mm-hmm. And there's blood everywhere. I like everywhere. to think she would poison him and they would have a lovely conversation while he died. Oh, that sounds so Probably. much better. Why do you have... It's very romantic. All right, I, screenwriter. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. We want to summarize our feelings on the movie? Not yet. Can I ask you about the pigeons in the beginning? Oh yeah, you can ask me about pigeons. Yeah, keep pigeons. Going. Do you do that when they're like slowly forming his face, mm-hmm. and then they fly away right as it like really solidifies? Mm-hmm. Did you guys appreciate that as much as I do? I, I did. No, I forgot did about it, it. Freak you out? No, it just it was. Okay. You just didn't care. Okay, I, I forgot about it, and then it popped up. I'm like, oh, I yeah. never forgot about that. That's my favorite part. Um, other fun fact? Not true. The opening shot of this film is the exact location and an approximation of the painting in his cell from Silence of the Lambs. That's excellent. Yeah. I I do love that. I can't appreciate that. You will eventually. You will when you go watch it tomorrow. Tonight. Uh, tonight. tonight. Oh, yes. Wow. We, tonight. Mom owns it. I'll, I will tell mom that you, you need to so watch it tonight. Is it on Netflix? Uh, no, it's on VHS. Even better. Going old school. Oh, man. Hopefully the ring's not on the back end of that. <laughs> Seven days. Uh, summaries? What do we think? Summarize sentence or two. Connor? Uh, blood, gore, storyline, fun, weird characters, but oddly satisfying. Okay. Uh, I'll let Ed finish, so I'll go next. I liked it, but only because of the characters. It is a lesser movie than Silence of the Lambs, but it's kind of stylish, really watchable, and keeps things entertaining throughout. Ed? I'd go with that. Yeah? Also, I promise I'm not a sociopath. 
Spoken like a true sociopath. Socio- I can't talk. Oh my gosh. I'm the sociopath of the group. Connor and Ed guess stuff and get points. If I'm not mistaken, last week we Connor tied. tied. Yeah. Tied it yeah, up. Yeah, it's tied. 22 to 22. That's right. Guests have a measly 13, but I've been threatening, and at some point they will have an opportunity to catch up. Great. Should be fun. Yeah, All right. It's going to be at the Oscars. Uh, Connor, you were last losing, so we still have to go to you first. Okay. <laughs> Six week in a row. Hannibal. Yeah, Hannibal. Higher or lower than 70% on Rotten Tomatoes? I'm going to go with higher. Yeah, I think higher. It is lower at 39%. Really? Uh, I guess because of after a silence and then this happened, people were like, no. Uh, a lot of critics wanted more um, interplay between Starling and Lecter. Mm. They missed that from the first movie. Okay. That was the main complaint I saw. That's fine. No points for anybody. Box office question. Connor, Science of the Lambs, did it gross more or less than $150 million in the U.S.? More. Ed? Less. It made more, but just barely. 165000 or oh. million, excuse me. $15 million is a lot. Uh, in Maybe not for a movie, but... In my pocket, fifteen million is a lot. Uh, Eighty-two million dollars to make it, which was a lot for two thousand one yeah. when this came out. Um, okay, and I changed up the last question. It's a multiple choice. Connor. Oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Ed, you got to be careful with the mic. <laughs> it's this stupid table. It's a fine table. Table's the worst. It's a fine table. Connor. Uh, and you both can answer the same question. It's multiple choice, but you can both Wait, answer the we same. Wait, ha- we get to answer the same question? Or That's use awesome. The same answer. Connor, let's answer the same question for this. Okay, this will got be it. fun. Got I hate it. you guys. Okay. Uh, you can use the same answer if you would like. Connor, the part of Mason Verger, played in the movie by Gary Oldman, Lower. was... Fr- <laughs> <laughs> Definitely higher. I love you guys. The part of Mason Verger played in the movie by Gary Oldman was first offered to which of the following actors? Good. There's only one of them. A, Christopher Reeves. Okay. B, Danny DeVito. C, Robin Williams. Or D, Johnny Depp. A. A, Christopher Reeves? Yeah. Johnny Depp. It is A, Christopher Reeves. You must be joking. No. So That's th- insane. I have... I have I have facts here. The part of Mason Verger was originally offered to Christopher Reeves based on his work as a wheelchair-bound police officer in the movie Above Suspicion. Not having read the novel, Reeves showed initial interest in the role, but ultimately declined upon realizing that Verger was a quadriplegic, facially disfigured child rapist. Which is an understandable that, reason. That to, could turn some people off. Yeah, I, I can understand that. You have to learn to grow as an actor. and <laughs> no, no. Yeah, stop while you're ahead. Connor, you have pulled ahead. Congratulations. For the first time in like... Months. Yeah. It's good. You should enjoy it. It's been a long time coming. You've earned it. (laughs) It's been a really long time coming. You've earned this. Rob didn't engineer this for you at all. Good job. Not at all. Next week, join us while I engineer questions not for Connor. Coming (laughs) soon to a podcast near you. Just please comment. Never mind. I don't even know. I don't no, even know. Comment. Comment anything you like. Comment. Just comment. Yes. Any comment. Rob told us we can't just awkwardly look at the camera while we're talking, so. But please, Rob, continue. No, Can no. We- he said we can't. He's allowed to. We're not allowed to. Yeah. I'm also not allowed to bounce my leg. Coming soon to a podcast near you. Bye, guys. I get to pick the movie. No, you don't. I get to pick the no, movie. No, it's Connor's turn. No. Nope. No, because I'm sitting here and we have to go this way nope. now. You don't get to I'll pick. Get to pick the movie. Way. No. We're watching a documentary. Oh. Mockumentary. Nope, a documentary. Don't mock- say an it. actual documentary called Holy Hell. I'm not even going to tell you what it's about, but it's a legit documentary. I would have thought cow. Ho- holy cow. No, Holy Hell the documentary. <laughs> we, it's been a while since we watched a real documentary, so. <laughs> Troll Hunters we, does we not just count lost, as a documentary. We just watched one last week. It was a great documentary. <laughs> Thank you so much for tumbling down the rabbit hole with us. You can find us <laughs> all over the internet uh, at wetumbledown.com, uh, on Twitter at wetumbledown, facebook.com slash wetumbledown. Also, our Snapchat that Connor supposedly does, mm. We Tumble Down <laughs> Podcast. Uh, yeah. You can also check out our other show that we do, Colony 13 Broadcasts. Ed hosts that. He does a fabulous shit job. We uh, 
What? Shove. I can't talk. <laughs> what was that word you were to say? It started with an S and you then do, an H. You do a fabulous shub. 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 But fabulous, he does a fabulous, a fabulous job shub. with that. Nah, see, you do oh, a fabulous yeah, job. See? Here we go. We watch right, Battlestar so Galactica each week and nah, talk it. about our feelings. Watch and it. Ed yeah. doesn't do that, but probably okay, should. Buddy. Do a fabulous job. <laughs> <laughs> This has been episode 60 of Tumbling Down the Rabbit Hole. How are we still doing this? I'm Rob Yates. Sheer willpower. That technical wizard is Ed Lynn. Take it easy, guys. That bearded wonder is Connor Yates. Have a good one. Thank you so much for joining us. Till next time. I'm starting the episode. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. We are Dry. the <laughs> <laughs> And now it's on video.